A few months back, I reviewed the Womir K66, which is a 65, 66% keyboard that is basically all just one big RGB light with some keys on it. That's sort of underselling it. It was a pretty decent keyboard and it is apparently pretty popular nowadays in the months since it has come out. Well, thanks to banggood.com, I now have the follow-up, the sequel, if you will, the big brother of the Womir K66. And that is this little light that you see behind me in, in right here-ish, the Womir K87. The Womir K87 is basically the Womir K66 in an 87 key configuration. Where the K66 had 66 keys and a sort of a weird, unusual configuration as far as the key layout, this is more of a traditional, straightforward 10 keyless design. So if you've ever used a regular 10 keyless keyboard, this is the exact layout as those. Inside the box, you're of course going to receive the manual and the keyboard and a cable. It's a cable's like, uh, it's like whatever. It's a white cable, it's not even braided. And you also get one of these plastic keycap pullers. Throw that in the trash and buy a wire keycap puller if you don't have one. Now what you do get in this version that is a little bit different is an unexpected little gift, which was this brush that you can use to clean the dust in between your keycaps, which is actually pretty sick. I'm actually pretty stoked about that because I've been wanting to get one of those bad boys. So there it is, I threw it in for you because you're going to want to keep this baby clean. Let that light shine through. You can't get the light shining through if you're all dust dusty and dirty and y'all grab me full of that gamer gunk on your keys you gotta take it off where was I going with this? And then of course there is the key switch puller and I don't know if this is gonna be in every box but mine was kind of like pretty. It had like this etched like flowery vine design on the side which I've never seen before. It was a nice little touch. It was a little something something to make you go ooh. Well this is not just a K66 with slightly more keys that would make for a sort of boring video. There are a few special differences with the K87 that do separate it at least from my version of the K66. One of the biggest differences is that the K87 is hot swappable. Now I know if you're watching this video and you know about the K66, you're probably gonna tell me, hey, the K66 was hot swappable. Yes, but only some versions. The version that I had, which is the one that was provided to me by Banggood, was not hot swappable. The K87 I have here from Banggood is, in fact, hot swappable. And unlike previous hot swap boards I've covered on this channel, like the GK61 and Red Dragon K whatever, it's always a K something, this is actually hot swappable with basically the majority of popular switches out there. The GK61 is only compatible with optical switches, the Red Dragon is only compatible with Red Dragon switches, which I think are Otemus, but this like legitimately includes regular Gateron switches. It comes in red, brown, I think there's a black version, and I have the blue version, which I hate. I hate blue switches because they're so just so loud. Nothing against the keyboard itself, it is all a matter of preference. I personally do not prefer blue switches, but that is what I was sent. No complaints here, it's just I don't like blue switches because they're really loud. They're so loud that I've been waking the neighbors. They're so loud that my dogs tend to bark every time I type. Car alarms in the distance are always going off whenever I need to use this thing. It's so loud that my wife left me. I'm still here. Sometimes I still hear her voice in the wind. If you don't believe me about how loud blue switches are, listen to this jackhammer of a sound test. Jokes aside, if you know me, you know I am a fan of linear switches. I do also enjoy tactile switches here and there, though I haven't used a whole lot of them. But linear switches are always where it's at for me because I really love how they sound and how they feel. So much so that I actually have some Gateron yellow switches coming from Banggood that I'm going to flip, try to flip, flip. So much so that I've heard a lot of good things about the smoothness of Gateron yellow for such a low price that I actually have some from Banggood coming at some point that I'm going to try out on this keyboard in a future video. Another difference between this version and the K66 weirdly is the keycaps. The keycaps on the K66 were nothing to write home about, but compared to the keycaps that come on the K87, 
I way rather have those. The keycaps on the K87 have like a slightly yellowish tint compared to the bright white ones on the K66. I don't like it. I didn't even notice it to be honest, but seeing it next to the K66, there is a difference and I just prefer the color on the K66 keycaps. In addition to that, the stock keycaps on the K87 have a really nasty font. The font on the keycaps of the K66 is just simple and clean and straightforward, but the legends on the K87 keycaps are kind of gross. The page up and down, insert, delete, all those keycaps up in that region of the keyboard, they just, they're kind of hard to read. I mean, I know what the keys are supposed to be, so obviously I can read them. So it's just, I don't know, it's nasty. I don't like it. With that being said, one frequent comment that I received on the K66 video is what would this keyboard look like with pudding keycaps? And amongst the most popular and even most affordable and best quality pudding keycaps are the HyperX ones that you can get on Amazon for like 25 bucks. So I picked some up and threw them on the K87 simply to show you guys how nice that looks. Personally, I'm kind of getting over the whole RGB thing a little bit as I get more and more keyboards in. My preferences have more so adapted to more muted colors, not so bright and flashy, but just something more minimal and not so loud and bright, more pastel colors versus like neon. So while I personally am not the kind of person who would really want putting keycaps anymore, they do look really nice and clean on the K87 and they really Really make it stand out in comparison to the stock keycaps. So if you are thinking about buying the K87 or even the K66 and you wonder what it might look like with putting keycaps, there you go. I think it still looks pretty nice. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Now here is a second sound test using the HyperX putting keycaps. I have a difficult time when it comes to sound tests with clicky switches. I really can't help but hear past just the clickiness of the switch versus the sound of the keycap and how it makes a difference in the sound. But I will say I do hear a slight difference using the pudding keycaps and I do slightly prefer it. It seems like it's a little heavier, but also a little bit crispier. It's not as empty sounding, in my opinion, to my ear. Obviously, one of the biggest things with this keyboard is the lighting. We've kind of gone into that previously in the K66 video, which I'll link here if you want to check it out. I'm just going to also kind of, as I'm talking, run through just the different lighting effects. Another weird thing about the keycaps with this one versus the K66 is that the K66 had legends on it for its various controls as far as lighting goes, whereas the keycaps on the K87 have none. It's up to you to pull out the manual and look at what does what in order to figure out how to change the lighting settings. It's actually kind of a little confusing, even going off memory, I would always kind of forget as I'm cycling through the lighting effects what exactly changes what. Basically, you hold down the function key and then toggle between three different settings, each with the insert, home, page up, page down, delete, and end keys. And function and the right arrow key toggle between the lighting settings on either the top of the key keys or the side lighting. It's a little confusing. It's something you kind of have to test out and play around with for yourself. Because even as I'm recording this just off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly what to do to do what, but uh, it's all there. Here, you're seeing it on screen. So the question remains, would I recommend the K87 or the K86? And the answer is yes. They're both solid keyboards and there's not really that much of a difference between the two of them aside from the keycaps and the size obviously, with the big exception of the hot swap ability. Like I said, there is a hot swappable version of the K66, but it is a little bit harder to find, whereas the K87 that you're going to find here is hot swappable. You can take out those switches and put in whatever other switches you want. You can get creams, you can get tangies, you can get kiwis, you could get kales, you could get cherry, all the, all the, just all the big old fruit salad full of key switches, all the fruits and foods that 
that they name switches after. Toss them on this board. If they're three or five pin, they will fit into these slots and you're good to go. You can even mix and match and make a Franken board out of this thing with all the lighting all that you want, all the, all the color, all the kinds of switches, and just make it a monstrosity of a keyboard to your heart's content. And that's what the world of custom keyboards is all about, ladies and gentlemen. So what do you think of this keyboard? Do you already have the K66 and now you're looking at the K87 kicking yourself in the head because you're like, man, I just got this thing a couple months ago. Now this one's here and it's got more keys and it's hot swappable. Or are you like, that's cool. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, if you want to see more of a detailed breakdown, I've kind of already gone through a lot of the things with this keyboard in the original K66 video, which you can watch here. This is more of just of a slight comparison. Essentially, like I said, they're mainly the same keyboard. Check it out. Check me out. Check you out. Thank you for being awesome. I gotta go.